the absolute worst call of the season. That That's an abomination, and enough's enough. And that was not fair. I'm done. The controversies in the NBA literally just peaked from contentious game winners to outrageous blown calls. And who can forget tough guys as fake as they come? This week in the NBA was unbelievable. We're officially 50 days away from the playoffs, so let's quickly catch up on everything the basketball gods just delivered to us. Chapter 1. Last Saturday. Ants tore through Europe. Saturday night in the association was chock full of controversy. The dissension started in Orlando. But before the drama, we found Jalen Suggs reaching for his quarterback's playbook for the touchdown pass. What a pass. Nice pass to Van Carroll. Lays it in and a foul. Touchdown! The Pistons were shorthanded, as they were without their center, Isaiah Stewart, who was suspended for punching an opposing player in Phoenix. That's right, Brian. Everything happened before the game in Phoenix. So what we know is that Isaiah Stewart did get involved in a pregame altercation upon Upon arriving to the arena, Stewart allegedly punched Sun Center Drew Eubanks. As a result, Stewart was arrested Wednesday, issued a citation, and released. In case you've forgotten, this is the same man who wanted LeBron's head on a spike just two years ago. Uh oh, Stewart and LeBron. Stewart is hot. And everybody's coming out now. Anger management. Someone linked this man with Dre's therapist. At the end of the game, the drama reached over 9,000. Down to five. He'll go to work. Step back. Over Durant. Shot is up. Oh! Van Caro drills it. With this controversial game winner, was it a travel? Was it not? I'll throw it to you to be the judge. After dropping 26, Cade nearly pulled off a Hail Mary shot from another area code at the buzzer. Careful. Shot is up. Cade Cunningham, three-quarter court. Oh, oh my of the redness. This win against the league-worst Pistons meant everything to Bancaro. And it was important. <coughs> Fuck. Uh. Take your time. Take your time. Walk me through the emotions that you're feeling right now to help this team get a win. Oh, my God. I'm sorry about that. I don't know why I'm fucking crying right now. Orlando was favored by eight, but they ended up squeaking by with just a three-point victory. Meanwhile, in the 12th largest state in the U.S., Carl Anthony Towns decided to detonate all over Claxton. Towns. Oh! And even without Rudy, their anchor, the number one defense showed why they're the number one defense. He's the jumper. Oh, Alexander Walker! Unfortunately for the Nightmare Nets, Ben Simmons had another injury that no one saw. Anderson. Oh, shoulder fake. And Got the bucket. And decided to call it quits four minutes into the third. But in clutch time, Anthony Edwards decided to take a tour of Europe with the Euro step. Edwards, Euro, flips it up. Oh, bucket and the foul. Nevertheless, in the final frame, Dennis Schroeder, Mr. Fake Tough Guy, made another appearance. Conley for three. Cash. Oh no. Well, it's Schroeder, the instigator there. Has Conley fired the three? Schroeder take an exception. Dennis Schroeder definitely was out of pocket right there. Well, Dennis Schroeder does not want to fight. He does not. Unwritten rules, my foot. If there's still that much time on the clock, you pull no matter what. Brooklyn posted the lowest field goal percentage by a Wolves opponent this season, 34%, as Minnesota cruised to a 15-point victory. Meanwhile, in the concrete jungle, the Celtics rolled into town with one mission, take down the Knicks, and take them down they did. Jalen Brunson went off, dropping 34 points. But the Celtics weren't having it. First, it was a 10-0 run for Boston. The Brown goes inside, and the finish. 14 points for Jalen Brown. Then a 9-0 run at the end of the third. Runs gets his own rebound, goes back up, blocked by Tatum. And lastly, another 10-0 run in the fourth to put the game away. Right off the bounce. Holiday wide open, corner three. They always seem to go in for the corner. The Celtics, favored by six, took care of business and walked away with a solid 14-point victory for their eighth consecutive win, which also put them eight games ahead of the second-seeded Cavs. Chapter 2, Sunday Night, Trouble in Philly. Sunday Night Hoops was an absolute barn burner. From rookies making waves to veterans reminding us why they're legends, the NBA delivered a spectacle. First up, Doc Rivers made his return to the city of brotherly love. But let's just say the love wasn't exactly flowing his way. The Philly faithful greeted him with a symphony of booze. Hey, 
The Bucks, though, came to play, and Giannis took the spotlight, deciding to tell Jalen Suggs that anything he can do, the Greek freak can do better. Giannis, length of the floor, pass to Lopez, and Lopez dunks it home with a tenth of a second left. What a great throw by Giannis, the length of the court. And right on the money, by the way. Antetokounmpo was straight up unstoppable, dropping 30 points and hitting the free throw line more times than the entire Sixers squad combined. The Bucks, who were favored by four and a half, cruised to a 21-point victory. Since losing the reigning MVP to a left knee injury in January, Philly has now lost eight of their last 12 games. Meanwhile, in the Bay Area, we witnessed a Clay Thompson sighting, and it was a sight to behold. Over the top to Trace. Clay Thompson again! He doesn't even have to hold his follow through. Talk to him. 21 points in just nine minutes in the first half. Turns out there's a secret sauce to Clay's longevity. I believe they call it the bench. Unfortunately, the magic ended there. As Killa Clay would post an offer in the second half, the best player in the world on the other end seems to have been activated coming out of the all-star break. Jokic dropped a monstrous triple-double, 32 points, 16 rebounds, and 16 assists. And Jokic with a steal. He anticipated it beautifully. Naji, he's gone. Oh, he puts it away, Jokic waiting till the perfect point. And the two-man game between him and Murray is still the most lethal action in the entire Milky Way galaxy. Jokic at the elbow, hands it back to Murray. There's that two-man game that is so difficult to stop. The Warriors were favored by one and a half, but the Nuggets completed the season sweep, winning by a cool 16 points, three wins in their last three games. They are starting to take things seriously now. At the same time, we witnessed a plot twist in Phoenix. Forget your typical big three. Grayson Allen, Royce O'Neal, and Nurkic decided to flip the script. Allen and O'Neal went ballistic from downtown, combining for 12 threes. Even Bol Bol got in on the action, dropping a bomb over LeBron himself. Corner, Bol Bol. Bowl coming off a big game, hits the three, you know the fans are going to love that. The Lakers were absolutely horrendous to start the game, as they allowed Phoenix to score 45 points in the first quarter. The most points the Suns have scored in a quarter all season. Allen, will he get it off? He will. The LA's favorite team was out rebounded 51 to 34, and that was with AD pulling down 14 on his own. Both these teams have superstars coming out the wazoo, yet they're both struggling to avoid the play in tournament. The death of the super team is now upon us. The Suns, who were favored by three and a half, secured the bag, winning by 10 points. While the officials were letting the Pelicans get away with murder in transition. Rookie Hawkins and oh! one. And one. What a finish by White. No whistle. How is that, that? How is that not a foul? Kobe White with an exceptional finish. But and the foul, foul on this end. The other end. How is this not a foul? He got mauled. Chet became the first rookie ever to rack up 100 threes and 100 blocks in a single season. He's trying a fast break opportunity. Ball on the runner, but there is Holmgren with the follow. However, in the Hoosier State, Miles Turner decided to go nuclear for 33 points on the Mavs. Caliber to Turner, who flushes it home. Big time pass there. Luca and Kyrie combined for a total of 62 points. And this man makes high yeah. degree of difficulty <laughs> shots look like a piece of cake. And now it's Luca operating in a low block situation. Doubled, laser pass through traffic. It's a four point trip down the floor. But it was all in vain as the Pacers snapped the Mavs seven game winning streak. The Mavericks were favored by two, but took a 22 point beat down. However, when we visited the Lakers little brother in LA, we found Sabonis compelling Zubak to question every life choice that led him up to this moment. In the last four possessions to start. Oh! Wow! A soul-crushing hammer by DeMontis Sabonis! Paul George was out with a left sore knee, and the Kings' defense was suffocating, as they didn't allow the Clippers to score more than 30 points in any single quarter. Physicality, just balls up in the air, 50-50 ball, and Sabonis goes and gets it. Fox exploded for 33 points, and Domas put up another triple-double, his 20th of the season, the most in the league. Yes, even more than Jokic. The Kings even had the light the beam chance shaking LA as they handed the Clippers their second straight loss. Music to our ears.
a feat that hasn't happened to the Clippers since December. LA was favored by four, but they lost by 16, a 20-point differential. Chapter 3, Monday Night, Pizza Party or a Foul Call? When the stars dimmed their lights, the underdogs seized the spotlight, and the controversies got even worse. The peak of the chaos occurred in the city that never sleeps. In a game as tight as the screws on a submarine, Jalen Brunson went off for 35 points and 12 assists on the Pistons. Brunson finds room, gets inside, count it, and one. Not going to miss that play and a chance for a three-point play. And Cade Cunningham responded with his own 32 and 8. But in the dying seconds of the game was when the real drama unfolded. With his team down one, with only 21 seconds left in the game, Brunson launched a three that rimmed out. And what came next was the most controversial non call of the season. 10 seconds to go, he throws it away. Ball loose, picked up by Brunson. Brunson inside the heart, Hart's banks it in. The man literally got tackled. Make it make sense. And then to add insult to injury, the non-call immediately led to a game winner against the Pistons. I know the Knicks got a raw deal a few weeks back, but having the Pistons to pay for it is downright shambolic by the refs. The Knicks, favored by 11, barely scraped by with a controversial two-point win. After the game, Coach Monty had this to say about the robbery. The absolute worst call of the season. No call. And enough's enough. We had a chance to win the game, and the guy dove into to Asar's legs and there was a no call. That That's an abomination. You cannot miss that in an NBA game, period. And that was not fair. I'm done. However, in Indiana, the Raptors' young team looked hungry as they were eyeing that tasty reward that coach had on the table. This whole season, Toronto hasn't won more than two games in a row, so after exhausting all his options, Coach Darko decided that bribery was the only language that would get through to his team. Get three consecutive wins, and it's a free dinner for the whole team on Coach's tab. Tonight was the night. The bribe was within grasp, and the Raptors played like their stomachs depended on it. RJ dropped 24 points. Huge third quarter. Oh, RJ from Pirtle on the inside. Scotty had a triple double and added five blocks for good measure. Scotty turns the corner up top. Yaka Pirtle with a slam dunk. Great. Connection. Matherin, on the other hand, had other plans, as he tried to ruin everything with a 34 piece for the Pacers. But IQ said, not today, Satan, zipping across the court like he was late for a date with destiny. He's smart. Quickly dribbling through traffic. Under a minute to go, two possession game. Quickly, three possession game. Beauty. The Pacers were favored by five and a half, but they got served with an eight point L. And after the free dinner was secured, the vibes were immaculate. <laughs> Even the Raptors broadcast was celebrating. You absolutely love to see this. But when we visited the almond capital of the world, we found the heat transporting the Kings to the Mexican desert of Chihuahua. The Miami boys were missing three starters. But did that stop them? Hell no. Mexican Jimmy, not your average chef, was cooking up a storm. Sabonis thought he was in for a chill night. But he got a taste of that Mexican flavor. Marquez against Sabonis. The rookie ducks in! Yes! Rookie status be damned. Sabonis, Mr. Triple Double himself, put up a valiant effort, posting his 21st Triple Double, impressive, which was also his 40 straight Double Double, historic. But even all that couldn't save the Kings from experiencing a Miami heat wave in the depth of winter. Caleb was in full playoff mode, dropping a sledgehammer dagger dunk. Right! Oh. Make it before Bam went sky high to shut down the King's dreams. Bam with a block! Oh, what a block by Bam against Trey Lyles! The Kings were supposed to be favored by seven and a half, but they took an L by 11 points as the Heat sent a message loud and clear. Five game winning streak and ready for the playoffs. Chapter four, Tuesday night. What did I just witness? Steph held scoreless, rookies rising, and game winners longer than a preacher's sermon. Tuesday night in the NBA was a script written in basketball heaven. It all began in the land of 10,000 lakes, where the Parisian skyscrapers faced off. Rudy Gobert sent Wembanyama on a sightseeing trip to the Arc de Triomphe. Hand off to Gobert. Gobert spinning on Wembanyama. The bank and the slam! It is grilled! 
But Wemby would pull out a step back straight from the alien planet of Haumea. Wemby against Kyle Anderson. Step back three. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Oh, mama, Wemby, yama. Once upon a time, I proclaimed that even his misses are highlight worthy. Oh, behind the back, throws it off glass. Can't finish it, and a foul is called. An effortless behind the back into a backboard lob to yourself. Kids a walking cheat code. Ant, though, almost gave everyone a heart attack with this ankle injury scare. And it just went down. May have turned his ankle. And he's on the floor right now, and Chris Finch calls timeout. But when he got back in the game, the man was drilling threes. Edwards, three ball, corner pocket. Before being cleared for takeoff. Oh, cookies! Highlight! Towns was out for personal reasons, but Edwards dropped 34 points, leading the Wolves, who were favored by 13 to a nine-point win. Meanwhile, in Cleveland, it was Kyrie's homecoming. The man returned to the queue, and the love was still in the air. But this game would be known as the Max Struess game. Sure, Luka might have dropped 45 and 14, and absolutely, Mitchell might have answered with his own 31 points. But with his team down 10, with less than four minutes left in the game, Struess caught the hottest of fires. Back it goes to Mitchell, takes the bump from Hardaway. Struess fires a three. He knocks it down. Oh. And now off the inbound, Struess again! Oh no! That is a bad call! Garland off to Struz. Struz with another. Oh my word! Shoot it! Super Max! Big old fire! And with two seconds left in the game, the man did this. Two seconds left. The Cavs are out of timeouts. They have to go 94 feet. Struz from midcourt. Oh! Do you believe this? My goodness! Max Struz from midcourt has won it! For the Cavaliers! This was the second longest game-winning buzzer beater in the three-point era. The Cavaliers, favored by four, took the W by just two points. After the game, his teammates had to cool him off because he was on heat. What are you feeling in this moment? I'm cold. Holy shit. However, when we flew over to Windy City, we found the Pistons getting their revenge. For a second there, Alex Caruso came out the closet, declaring to the world that he is and always has been the cookie monster. For white this season. Oh, cookies! Alex Caruso does it again. Here he comes! DeRozan, the spinning maestro, also hit us with another insane cyclone layup. Clock down to two. DeRozan! The marvelous DeRozan, Compton's finest. Absolutely ridiculous, but Cade wasn't about to let the Bulls steal the show. Here's Cade, the number one guy for the Pistons, fires and fills it. Dude was like the Greek god Atlas, carrying the world on his shoulders while dropping 26 points. Maybe dishes it deep. Jalen Duran off to Cade by himself, and he buries it and leading the Pistons to a clutch win, snapping a six-game skid. This was the Pistons' ninth win in 58 games. Two of those nine wins have come against the Bulls. From MJ to this mess, who is getting fired this time? But in the capital city of these United States, Chef Curry couldn't cook up anything. Zero points in the first half, something that hasn't happened since 2012. Nevertheless, the Dubs had other weapons ready to step up, Moses Moody being one of them. Moody pulls it back and hits a three and has the Warrior bench going nuts. Chris Paul also made his return after being out for seven weeks and was orchestrating the offense like the master conductor that he is. Traffic here with the 21 point lead. Now Kaminga! Clay, coming off the bench again, dropped 25 points, leading the Warriors who were favored by 10 and a half to an 11 point win. And with the win in the bag, glowing reviews were in order. Well, CP is one of the greatest to ever see the floor. His uh, ability to read the game, especially offensively, is second and none. While Jimmy Buckets was busy turning into Jimmy Lockdown. Grant stripped by Butler and taken back by Kamara. Whatever it takes. The Heat were getting their fifth straight win, while the Blazers were ending February with a painful 0 of 9 record. At the same time, Derek White had the entire Sixers roster in maximum security. 
Ubre, Derek White comes up short. Fast borderline faux pas right there. Gotta, wait, gotta, gotta get to the springtime, maybe. Yeah, okay. Here's right. Paul Reed inside, and he's denied again by White. Boston held Philly to 39% shooting from the field. And with his threes not falling, JT decided it was time for a different approach. Much on the three-point shooting and had those lulls at time. Oh, oh, the brotherhood! <laughs> the Celtics were favored by 11 and a half and ended up winning by a solid 18 points. However, in the 405, Chet defensive prowess was on full display. Green had it blocked by Holmgren. Shengun, no look. Jabari Smith Jr. He even pulled off this reverse alley oop poster dunk. That's what he's been able to do with the veteran leadership that they brought in. Oh, oh my goodness. Holmgren on the reverse rack attack. And don't even get me started on those fully packaged deliveries he was sending to Hayward. Holmgren lob it up. Slam it down. Jalen Green tried his best for Udoka. Watch his shooting numbers. Green Skywalker. But it wasn't enough against the Thunder Trio. Speaking of which, the 30-point merchant kept his consistency going. Death taxes and SGA for 30. It's inevitable. I, I like what they're doing in Houston with this point. Shay Gilgis Alexander. Count it. For Houston. Gilgis Alexander, step back three, pulls high. The Thunder Trio combined for 73 points. They were favored by 10, but ended up winning by a commanding 17 points. Chapter 5. Wednesday night. Food coma before the pizza party. On hump day, the stars were out as the NBA rolled out the red carpet for an evening of pure basketball magic. First off in the City of Angels, we had a Tinseltown tussle for LA. But if we're being honest, the show was LeBron's and his alone when the King wasn't pulling out his patented chase down block. Buffy. Charging right in the chase down slot from James. He was auditioning for the men's gymnastics national team. Six, little pump deck, lean check, count it! And when he does a somersault the other way, and he'll go to the line. However, his true heroics occurred in the fourth. With his team down 21 going into the fourth, LBJ turned back the hands of time and scored 19 of his 34 points in the final frame to will his team to victory. As James takes his time, drills it. Lakers maybe to get it down to nine. James it back with LeBron. Got it! Another the three. The king! The chosen one by himself outscored the entire Clippers squad in that fourth quarter, granting the Lakers their first series win over the Clippers since the 2011-2012 season. Meanwhile, in Mile High City, the Nuggets were firing on all cylinders. Murray sidesteps to a three. That's good. And we're tied up. Give it to Yoke. To Gordon. Murray was on an absolute heater, sinking shots left and right. Over to Murray. He fires and gets. That's selfish. Murray on a fire, a triple. Got it again. Including this no look circus shot. And a foul. Murray with a little Houdini action there. But Jokic, ever the basketball genius, was thiefing steals by faking charges. The Joker has solved basketball. Is there anything this man can't do? His fourth straight triple-double on his way to helping the Nuggets secure the commanding 21-point win against the shorthanded Kings. And with this win, the Nuggets improved to being just two games behind Minnesota for the top seed in the Western Conference. The race to the finish line is heating up. However, when we checked in on the Bulls again, we found the ghost of Ben Simmons in full possession of Javon Carter. The game was insane as it ended up going to double overtime. And in clutch time, DeRozan came through. Drummond ruled the boards with 26 rebounds. and the fast-paced reality of the NBA hit the Cavs hard as they took a nine-point loss. Despite being favored by five and a half, while Rudy was giving Jaw some comedy relief during his rehab. Whoa, whoa, whoa. John Morant got a kick out of that. We witnessed a dunk fest in Indiana. A bucket coming. And they've got plenty of time. They lob it up, throw it down! Oh, so tight! So tight! It's been there. The lob for Z. What a pass! Great pass. Will be topping for a second time. Give him a go. 
But after swimming across the Niagara Falls to the land of poutine and maple syrup, we found the raptor starting off hot. However, Kyrie had other plans as he flexed that legendary handles package. Here's Kyrie on the dance floor. Over two defenders, he nails it. <laughs> Actually, it was Luca's 25th birthday, but instead of being the recipient, he was the one handing out the gifts. Ooh, that pass. It is a sweet pass, and it's a big hit from the corner. Birthday Boy dropped a filthy triple double 30 points, 16 assists, and 11 rebounds. And the Mavericks, favored by four, clinched an impressive 11 point victory. Chapter 6 Thursday Night, A King Amongst Kings. Thursday Night in the Association was the ultimate showcase of talent, determination, and sheer willpower. The showcase began in San Antonio, where the vertical vanguard vendetta took place. Chet versus Wemby, an epic battle for Rookie of the Year. Chet may have thrown the first punch as Holmgren steps into it in transition. That's a three. And he had plenty of help from Maple Jordan. And Shea right through the Spurs defense with authority. But our young Titan had had enough of the losing. Xander blocked away again by Victor. He fires. He scores! Victor snatched that rookie of the year spotlight right from under Chet's nose. Holmgren trying to answer. He is stuffed and taken away. Places going bananas. Jones. <laughs> With Vassell, the Robin, to his Batman. Jones ahead. Vassell puts a top on this one. Wembenyama helped lift the Spurs to an epic sunning of the second best team in the league. The Thunder were favored by 11, but they got schooled and annihilated by 14 points. This loss dropped OKC down a full game behind Minnesota in the Western Conference standings. After the game, Wembenyama had the crowd going nuts. And even David Robinson was looking on with pride. The kids got charisma for days. Over in Charlotte, Brooke Lopez seemed to be in his own world with a brain malfunction moment. Oh my goodness, what was that? <laughs> he, he was expecting a whistle to be blown. He's like, I'm gonna get this out of my hand. As Giannis and Dame were serving up some gourmet chemistry. That streak's over, but the ball finds oh, no. Lillard! Oh, no. Are you kidding me? It was an easy win against the Hornets, but Doc must be feeling pretty good about that four-game winning streak, while Jalen Suggs was casting magical spells on the court. Now getting up behind the back, Wagner, another dunk, Mo, Mo. <laughs> Booker was using Houston as target practice for his rocket launcher. There's your answer, and there's the result. Boom! Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Yeah. Pull up three, hold the pose. Cam Whitmore had had enough of the disrespect, and so this happened. And the rookie Whitmore exchanging blows with Devin Booker. Well, Whitmore saying he's not taking it. Well, I mean, it's between the lines. You're playing ball. And Rock has been talking junk all day. Devin talked a little. Just talk junk. Booker ended up with 35 big ones. And despite Bradley Beal being MIA for his fifth straight game, the Suns managed to secure the win. Favored by eight and a half, they came out with a five-point W. Meanwhile, in Hollywood, the Lakers made it their personal mission to dominate the whimpering Wizards. LeBron was unstoppable as he decided to bless Jordan Poole with his signature chase-down block. <laughs> two of them in one week. And immediately after the block, the King sprinkled a three-pointer on top like it was extra seasoning on that barbecue chicken. AD was no slouch either. Dropping 40 points and snagging 15 rebounds, LeBron casually put up 31 points, making history. If you put together all the players who have played 21 seasons in the NBA and combine all their points, LeBron has just scored more points by himself this season than all of them put together. And this game put him just nine points away from extending his scoring title to 40,000. Unbelievable. The Wizards, on the other hand, were the second team to win zero games in February. A brutal 0-12 record. However, while LeBron was making history, Chuck decided to piss on the dreams of two fan bases in one quick go. Chuck is laughing. 
Because I'm so sick of these fools on other networks talking about the Lakers and the Warriors. Ain't nobody worried about the Lakers and the Warriors in the West. Say what you want about him, the man is a fax machine. Back on the court, Steph turned Madison Square Garden into his personal kitchen. Again, the personal family matter. And Steph opens with the three. And now Curry fires once again. Uh-oh, Stephen Curry. He's off to one of those starts. Dante DiVincenzo got mic'd up for the game, and the result was glorious. That's how you wanted to start off? You wanted to start D.C. scoreless, now you want to come in here. Okay. Yeah, I've been watching. Ever since you texted me. <laughs> Kuminga, though, was on demon time. Just ask Brunson. Now Kuminga goes inside, drops Brunson, and scores. And Kuminga says too little. Bro was even dishing out full court dimes. Now the outlet to Curry. Long three in transition. Spike Lee was out here trying to recruit CP3, but it seems like Chris wasn't vibing with that idea. The Warriors were favored by three and a half and won by 11 points. The Knicks may be in fourth place, but they are now only one game ahead of being a play-in team. The competition is getting stiff in the East as well. But in colorful Colorado, we had a rematch of last year's finals. Jokic was Jokic. Double teamed, triple teamed, it doesn't matter. The man scores anyway. Martin goes on Jokic. Doubled by Butler. Oh, he put it up and in. Somehow, some way, he pulls a Houdini. Jamal Murray was sinking everything under the sun. Doubled by Martin. Puts up a prayer. Oh! But unfortunately, he went down with an ankle sprain and had to head back to the locker room. Uh oh, he's down with an ankle injury. Oh, 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 he's oh. holding that ankle. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. This is the last thing. If you're Michael mm. Malone and a Nuggets fan, you wanted to see. Fingers crossed that he's okay. The playoffs just won't hit the same without him. But Michael Porter Jr. stepped up to the plate, dropping 30 points. Porter got it again! Oh, he is a machine! As the Nuggets, who were favored by six and a half, took a six-point W. A five-game win streak since the All-Star break, and just half a game back from the second-seeded Thunder. Chapter 7, Friday Night. Prime day in Chicago. Friday night hoops in the association served up a feast of surprises. First of all, Kyrie returned to Boston. And Kyrie sucks, chance rained down. And now a message from this crowd for Kyrie Irving. Jalen Brown made it his personal mission to beat the left-hand allegations. Brown. Oh. And Tatum helped out his brother in crime, dropping five bombs from beyond the arc on a 32-point night. Tatum. Wants it. Guy moves. As Tatum connects on another three. 16 points in the quarter for Tatum, his fourth three of the frame. All the while, Drew was playing like the whole game was a holiday for him. No way. way. No way. way. Oh my gosh. Fading out of bounds. The Celtics cruised to their 10th straight victory, bearing Dallas under a 28-point avalanche. North of the border, Kuminga was this close to starting a war with Canada. Speaking of assists. Created an international incident dunking over Pirtle there. And the Raptors unfortunately lost Scotty to a broken left hand. Scotty Barnes holding his hand earlier. He tried to catch a pass in a but the Dubs took advantage of the situation, extending their road-winning streak to eight games. Unfortunately, the injury gods had the same fate lined up for Russ as well, praying for a fast recovery for both of them. However, in the Big Easy, the Pelicans tied their franchise record with a monstrous 48-point first quarter shooting 91% from the field. Brandon Ingram was straight up disrespectful. TJ's triple and a nice crossover. Brandon on the reverse. <laughs> Going to the line. Mid-range, step through. Going off the glass to yourself. Yes. Going off the glass to yourself. Why not? Everything else has worked. And Trey Murphy the third was raining down threes. Six of them to be exact. That matchup right there. Great pass. Set it up beautifully. Trey. Bang! What a way to finish 
Mama Bear was still not pleased that her boy missed two consecutive free throws in the past couple of games. It has been a couple of games where you've missed two free throws in a row. That is bothersome to your mother. Yeah, I have to make free throws, obviously, and um, just not rush and not get too excited on the line. Yep, next question, please. <laughs> Nevertheless, when we visited Motown, we found Jarrett Allen sending Jalen Duran to the dungeon, while Darius Garland was scorching the nets, draining eight threes and dropping 29 points for the shorthanded Cavaliers. Here's Garland. He'll shake around an Allen screen. There's another three. This time it's Garland. Three. Garland unloads. Hey! Right. Knocks it down. Darius Garland. Leading the Cavs to a 10-point win over the Pistons. But the player of the night was the Greek freak, who dropped 45 points while grabbing 16 boards. The man was even delivering no-look dimes like he was a prime delivery worker. Lopez! Shooting fatigue on the second game of a back-to-back. -back. Brooke is two for three from three. A five-game winning streak for the Bucks, and now improved to eight and seven in the Doc Rivers era. If you end up enjoying this video, please subscribe. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Anyways, wherever you are in the world, be the goat of that moment. Stay goated.